I'm Shaylee Harrison, and I'm an Australian fashion designer slash entrepreneur based in Antwerp, Belgium. I've been sewing since I was a little girl. I taught my main grandmother to make dolls. I kind of steered myself in that direction through high school. I moved over to Sydney to study design at the White House Institute of Design. And I had a teacher there who taught us the Antwerp Six in fashion history. That's when I started to think maybe I wanted to hone in on my skills as a designer and focus towards a more um, avant-garde or creative approach. I moved to, to Antwerp when I got in and completed my studies here. After I graduated, I did go on and work for Manisha Aurora between New Delhi and Paris and then moved back to Antwerp and that's when I started Mutiny. I had come across a friend of a friend who was 3D scanning, creating these 3D printed little figurines, which I just thought were really cool. So I started 3D scanning my collections um, and we created a virtual reality experience. Marc Flocan, the guy I was working with, suggested that I look into Clo3D and in Marvelous Designer and Digital Fashion. And at the time I found it extremely difficult, very frustrating technology to work with. So I dabbled and circled back to it intermittently. I was commissioned to do an artwork or textile work for an exhibition in Hasselt at Z33 Gallery. So I decided to do a digital textile piece. I worked with a couple of digital creatives to create a VR installation where the entire space itself was a textile. And we created this very creepy looking woman with a big textile veil that was crawling around in the atmosphere with a dog and a pit of fire and flames and it was all very dramatic. <laughs> I, I kind of progressively kept building up digital projects from there. I was invited to participate in the follow-up to Helsinki Fashion Week. They converted their physical runway into a digital runway and they wanted to do another iteration of that. I also built up a collection for that, um, brought in more 3D character artists. Together we collaborated to design these uh, extinct plant characters that were taking revenge against humanity, but of course wearing fashion <laughs> and um, building up an entire narrative around this. It's been a step-by-step -step journey that brought me fully into the digital, but even my physical was very fantasy-based. And that was what attracted me to that digital space was the inspiration and the magic that comes with working digitally because a lot of my fashion was always very much involved in storytelling, a lot of colour, a lot of magic fantasy, a lot of concept basis rather than the kind of commercial end of the fashion space. The barrier is definitely that the greater world doesn't understand what digital fashion is. And a lot of brands, you know, people in fashion still don't understand the value of bringing that type of tooling into their process. So it's the education, it's the learning curve, it's it's trying to pique people's interest. I think that's it's a common barrier for, for many people working in the digital space. Being able to show the world the value that you're not just clicking a button that says go and it uh, manifests itself that there's a level of skill involved. In the past, a lot of it has been text-based. Um, my master collection was based on the Ecosex Manifesto, which is about treating uh, Mother Nature as your lover or your relationship to nature as a romantic one. I love exploring new philosophical or futuristic concepts, theater, drag, performance art. I am just a creative sponge. It's never consistent and I don't want it to be consistent because I think to keep the creative blood flowing, it's always good to keep pushing and challenging yourself in new ways and develop your design characteristics outside your familiar, typical form. What would characterize me so far has been a lot of volume and a lot of layers and a lot of color, high contrast, lots of mixed print so I'm a bit more of a maximalist than a minimalist let's say. When I design it's about building a narrative 
around a concept. So I usually start with gathering all of my visual material and then I'll reinterpret that into an artwork. So I usually paint, draw, sculpt, or hot glue a bunch of stuff together to just kind of give myself fresh ideas. And then I'll take those and reinterpret them into forms and materials and to build it out from there. But it's always a journey that happens in succession. Usually I, I build the garment around a character. So it's never just the garment itself. There's always a person wearing it with a whole life and world built around them. And what are they saying and what are their meanings? That's also why I lean so hard into the digital because it's not just the clothes, it's the entire environment. It's the sound, it's the animation, it's the camera work, it's the lighting. That's what gives it life. That's really why I love to work in that way. very hard to put myself in a box. I do because it's easier, of course, when you're communicating with other people. But when you tell people you're a fashion designer, they think you're making pencil skirts and boob tubes or something. And that's definitely not where I'm going with this. But if you tell people you're an artist, it kind of just means you're working in a white space gallery and building installations. It's also not quite what I'm up to. So, I don't know. I'd like to think I'm a bit like a musician slash poet slash writer slash painter slash performance artist Billy Childish. He was really about not putting himself in a box as a creative person, and that you can be successful at many things and many mediums all at once, and that we really shouldn't have to label ourselves because all humans are multifaceted. So I'm going to go with that. What I've contributed to Future Front Row with the live hologram runway show. Being able to bring the, the fantasy of the digital into a real life setting with the holograms and to be able to affect people emotionally with the animation because we used motion capture from a dancer named Nevea Shea who is an incredible trans performance artist. She's danced for Elton John and a number of artists and gave this amazing, incredibly emotive performance to a very beautiful soundtrack with some of my archive pieces. I was getting messages from people saying they cried <laughs> and I didn't expect it to have this level of effect on people. You don't really know when you're building these things how it can be an emotional experience for me is the most rewarding because what I aim to give through what I do is nothing but joy and when it that visceral I mean, that's something pretty special. So being a part of that thanks to Antonio and Isabel who put that whole show together at Amsterdam Fashion Week it was nice to be a part of something that feels like a part of digital fashion history. I can't really say looking back how we'll view it but it feels like an iconic moment. I know there's a lot of people who get into digital fashion that also might not know traditional fashion. And I see a lot of stuff out there that sort of looks like it's cutting corners in a, in a way because it's missing a lot of the refined details of what makes clothes clothes. Putting those seams in or those buttons in or those buttonholes in or those tiny details elevates it to a level that it becomes more realistic, more refined and a more beautiful piece. And also bringing the asymmetrical details of what we see in the real world into the digital can also create a level of beauty that you don't always catch in the digital because it's always this very controlled symmetrical space. I think if you know too much, it can stop you from thinking outside the box. It's good to begin with a lot of play and really experiment because you're not going to be hindered by what you know is right. But then once you start developing your own voice and your own personal style, that's when you can start bringing in those elements to refine it and finish it to a higher caliber. So taking care not to absorb or copy too much of the visual world around you, not taking too much inspiration uh, from fashion, but looking outside of that, because with digital fashion, you really don't have to look to traditional fashion. So that would be one of my hot tips and also to learn how to present the work in a way that's beautiful, creating an atmosphere around it that really showcases your work in the best light. It's the same as when I make real clothes. It's actually the photo shoot that brings the attention and gets you there and, and becomes part of your portfolio. I 
had the pleasure of being in the position to get really great feedback from Walter van Berendonk when I was studying at the academy and just having that mentor to give you that feedback to understand that the direction that you're heading in and help refine your character as a designer I think it's a really important part there's no like one piece of advice but I think just having mentor figures is invaluable and I have that now I have business coach and having that space to to rebound is amazing it's just nice to continue the growth Thank you.